Graphic designers, you need to learn these five tools in Illustrator because they're tools that professional designers use all the time and they can be used for many different types of graphic design work, whether it's lettering, illustration, uh, logo design, and pretty much anything else in between. And over the next eight minutes, you will not only become a better designer for knowing these tools, but you'll have also created a beautiful piece of lettering in the process. And there's also a free font linked below called Nicanely Normal. Uh, I just love this font. We're gonna be using it in this video. So go ahead and grab that one. Now let's jump to the screen and get started. Right, so I've created a new document and I've added four global swatches. The project files are linked below. And first I'm gonna grab the type tool, click anywhere and type some text. I'm gonna type the word Leo, and then I'm gonna pick a font. I'm gonna go with Nicanely Normal and then customize some of the font settings. So Leo is my eldest son. He's gonna be turning seven next week. I don't know how that's happened, but if you're following along, you can do this with your own name or you can just pick a word that you like. So now it's nice and big and in the center, I'm going to lock the selection so it doesn't move and then select our first proper tool for this video, everyone's favorite the pen tool. Now make sure that you have no fill selected and you have a stroke and I'm going to double click this and I'm going to set the color to something really bright like pink and then what I can do is zoom in nice and close and click on the start of the L and then click and drag to draw out a curve. Now because I'm tracing over an existing font I'm going to try and keep my pen tool path running down the center. So let's just click again, drag up and drag around and down. And if you are working with a different font, maybe it has fewer curves and a few more hard edges, you can follow up a curve with a straight line by simply clicking on that last anchor point. And in fact, I'll demonstrate this technique in a minute. Right, let's just finish off this first letter. So there we go, that's pretty much the process with the pen tool. Now it's time to do the other letters. So similar again for the E, let's click on a starting point click and drag, click and drag. However, you'll see here Illustrator wants to continue the curve, but it doesn't quite line up with the rest of the E. So by clicking on that last anchor point, you can cut that curve and follow it up with your own curve or a straight line. And now I'm done with the letter E, I can press escape to deselect that path. Now I can do the same again for the O. However, as you'll see in a moment, well, it's probably not the best way to do this. Now I'm doing this very quickly, but you can see that's uh, got a bit wonky. So let's select and delete that. And instead we're just gonna grab the ellipse tool Click and drag to draw an ellipse and then just adjust the size, position and rotation so that it matches the letter O. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to select everything and then bump up that stroke weight. And I'm leaving off that flick on the O just because I don't like it. Okay, next let's unlock everything and select that original text and then delete it. And with everything selected, I can go to the stroke properties and then change the cap type to round. And now we come to our second tool, the smooth tool. And if you struggle with the pen tool, this tool is brilliant. You can just click and drag over your paths that you've drawn and it will literally adjust the geometry to smooth everything out. And you don't need to be super precise with this. Just keep clicking and dragging over the paths until you get a smoothness that you're happy with. Now, the better that you get with the pen tool, the less you will need to do this. But to be honest, I use this tool all the time, even now. And yeah, it's just absolutely brilliant. Right, now I'm gonna select the ellipse tool and click and drag holding shift to draw a circle. Let's swap that fill in the stroke, select the fill, and then from the swatches panel, select the default black to white gradient. And then from the gradient panel, I'm going to double click on the black swatch, navigate to swatches, and then select that orangey ready swatch on the far right. Next, double click on the white and apply the color next to it, which is a little bit more orange. And you should have a nice gradient like this. You can then adjust the angle by 90 degrees and then click this icon here to swap the colors around. And for this step, you want your lighter color to be on top. Now let's scale this up a bit holding shift and then hold alter option and drag to create a duplicate. And just as we did before, apply those two remaining swatches to the gradient slider, again with the lighter one being on top. Boosh, looking good. Okay, let's close those panels down and drag over both of these shapes to select them. And again, drag with Alt or Option to duplicate these. And with the bottom two selected, this brings us on to our third tool, the Blend tool. So let's go to Object, Blend, and select Make. And you get something like this, which is fine. But if we go back to Blend and select Blend Options, we can make this even better. 
So from the drop down, let's change this to specify distance and set the distance to 0.1 pixel. And you can see everything blends smoothly and we can hold alt or option and drag to create a few duplicates. Make a whole bunch of these because you will need them. And remember that you can access the blend tool from the toolbar on the left as well. And this next step is where the magic happens. It's my favorite part of the process, hands down. And uh, yeah, just watch, you'll see why in a moment. Okay, so with the top most blended gradient thing selected and the letter L selected, I'm going to go to object, blend and select replace spine. And if done correctly, you should get something that looks like this. Now you can reverse the colors the other way by going back to the blend menu and selecting reverse spine, or you can select reverse front to back. I'd just give these a go and see which one you prefer. I think I'm gonna stick with the original in this example. And something else you can also do, which is pretty cool, is double click to go inside the blend group and you can select those individual circles and adjust the size. And you can make these shapes bigger or smaller. And as you can see, the width of your letters will then be adjusted accordingly. But I'm gonna keep mine a constant width and then I can exit the blend group in the top left corner. Right, now let's do this again for the other letters. And just remember to select replace spine and not make, otherwise it will go all kinds of crazy. And you can see here, I can double click to go inside the group, right click on this circle, go arrange, center back, and then this part of the E will be behind rather than in front. Now remember we drew the O with the ellipse tool rather than the pen tool. And if we try and do this same technique here, we end up with this. No idea why, but there is a workaround. Which neatly brings me on to our fourth tool, the scissor tool. And this can be used to make cuts along a path. So let's zoom in nice and close to the top, find that existing anchor point, and then click on the path just next to it to create a cut. And you can see this cut has added another anchor point. And with the direct selection tool, I can click in between them and hit delete or backspace to create a gap. Now the gap is so small that you can't actually see it. So if we try this again, go to blend and select replace spine. Well, now you can see it works. Now, I don't know why it does this. There's probably a technical reason somewhere, but hey ho, this is your workaround. Okay, now I'm just going to take a second to move the E and the O up a little bit. And normally I would save this gradient. I would keep all these things off the artboard, but I'm feeling confident and I know I'm done with them. So I'm just going to delete them. All right, back to the pen tool again. I'm going to click and drag to draw an accent shape that's going to hug the corner of the letter. Now this path doesn't have any color yet. So let's select the stroke and then grab the eyedropper tool. And instead of clicking to sample the color, I'm going to hold shift and click and it will sample the exact color that the eyedropper tool is over. Now let's go and bump up that stroke weight. And then from the stroke properties, we'll change the cap type to round. Which brings me on to our fifth and final tool, the width tool. And if you've never used this before, this tool is brilliant. You're gonna love this. So what I can do is click on an anchor point and I can use this to adjust the width. So you can see I've made the top end a bit chunkier and the bottom end I'm now going to make a bit thinner. Now, because I've rounded the cap already, this might jib out a little bit. So I'd zoom in nice and close and just do this very precisely. There you go, you can see I got it there. And I'm just gonna adjust the rotation and position of this accent shape, just so it follows a similar curvature to the letters around it. Now you can increase the stroke, whoa, Jesus, calm down, Dan. So you can increase the stroke weight and it will maintain those proportions. And there we go, now I've done one, I'm just gonna do a couple more. And of course, the last step is to drag over everything and with it selected, right click and select group. And lastly, I'm going to use the align tools to pop this in the center and we have our finished design. And I think it's looking pretty good. Well done, Dan. Have a biscuit. And there we go. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did and you're hungry for more Illustrator, I've got another one here or here that I think you'll enjoy. But as always, you've been absolutely fantastic. Take care and I'll see you next time.